Well, it's time to go back to Battlefield 1. Rejecting Sci-Fi Battlefield 2042 and returning to World War 1. This game is weird, not because 1 is the number, but how the game made the franchise survive longer. Battlefield 4 was a huge buggy game because of its rush deadline and immediate needed help from our dice department for an art year to fix the game as quickly as possible and became the best Battlefield as fans think. But that is still debatable, and Hardline wasn't that interesting due to its different setting from Cops and Robbers. And I have to give credit to this game, trying a different setting, and its game that actually runs well and doesn't have a lot of issues to its dead space company, Visceral Games, and rip Visceral Games indeed. And while another Dice Studio was ready to sign off to Battlefront 1 and get ready to Battlefield 1, the main dice went all shots to make a World War 1 game. 2016 was one of the games that revived the FPS market, like Overwatch, Doom 2016, Arena Shooters, and Titanfall 2. While the FPS games are sci-fi, what unexpected for a lot of fans is DICE making a different route. Instead of a World War II or modern setting like Battlefield 3 or 1942, they instead make a World War I game. And it went to hype. I remember people were so excited due to its presentation, a different setting that not a lot of games tap into, and if they did, it's a rarity. I remember that time it's one of the games that had a perfect timing due to Infinity Ward's Infinite Warfare controversial dislikes, and those dislikes were the opposite from Battlefield 1. I remember that time DICE was so ambitious to this new project that they seemed to forget in their recent title. It's not just a new game, it's the new Battlefield. Multiplayer is one of the games that I actually spend time on, and most of the time I spent when revisiting is Operations and Conquests. Sadly, I didn't play too much Frontal Assault, and Rush, while one of my favorite modes, wasn't a thing now due to its player base. But Operations is like the Rush and Conquest when it's combined. So I didn't get sad at it, which is why I want to talk about Operations. Operations is one of the modes that I actually got immersed in its setting with its fidelity, presentation of the cutscenes, and the player's actions when charging on that operation. And being on a squad with so much to go and fight that every match I played is so enjoyable. Whether I win or lose, because there's so many unexpected mo- I mean baffled moments that stick with you and remember fondly. This game's strength is its presentation, even if it's not accurate. But so many explosions, gas, and seeing your gun on the dirt. It's a half decade old, and this game is still state of the art using its engine so damn well to convey the presentation on multiplayer. In fact, it's weird for me to say that I got immersed to the multiplayer more than the single player, which the single player I will discuss later. The operations has its countries, voice lines, and voice actors so different to their country and their talent in their DLC that they add more to it, which is impressive. And its sandbox of medic and other classes are so damn fun, but this time, Supporters fill the engineer role and there's a subclass that is called the medic which most of the time I use because I like reviving. Assault is about anti-vehicle infantry. Medic is already obvious by heating and reviving. Support is the engineer that has mortars, repair, and given the ammo type. A recon is about sniper traps and spotting people with a flare. There's also specialists from Battlefield 2042, I mean Battlefield 1 that are pickups more like power weapons from Halo that you can have flamethrower which I fucking love or juggernaut which killing one of them can help your teammate by a lot and it's satisfying to see that kill. What I love about operations is when you're the attacker, you feel so prepared with 20 people charging the site even if it can be a meat grinder but it can overwhelm the enemy that seeing so many gunshots and the team pushing while reviving to capture the objective apples is so damn memorable. It's rush, but longer, and quite scale, although there's some faults, and it's being an individual and a squad doesn't contribute much. You think being an individual with a scale contributes, but you need an entire battalion to capture a sector in operations. 
while Conquest and Squad can contribute largely to its capturing behind points. Operation doesn't do that because of two capturing bases and there's always tons of people defending that site when sneaking in the back lines. And this game has problems to its cheaters which is not surprising to its age. But all of that is my complaint to operations. And what surprised me the most is how they change a lot to its vehicles that are accurate to World War 1. Seeing a tank is like seeing a demon. While it's quite hard to kill, it's satisfying when a squad of it or a battalion destroys it. And when you're losing to operations by not capturing or cannot defend that well, the game sends a behemoth to contribute your attacks that people who try their hardest still have another chance to the game. The game is also nice when retreating. You're granted another life if the retreater didn't go to the sector from its 250 players, and you have 3 chances to capture 6 major points. What also surprised me is how the game can handle its camera when shooting the motor and its presentation of your contribution. Maps in this game is alright, but there's some maps that reminds me of Operation Lockout in Battlefield 4. Playing Operation Argonne Forest is just cancer when you're attacking team in the second defense where the enemy is at A and you defend B where inside is a CQC nightmare where you have test one patient to let the entire battalion squad to attack you while Lockout is a map that I hate and love. At least flanking routes exist. Argonne Forest has two of these, and Monte Grappa, while a beautiful map, does share its issues on being a high ground and little spots where they can cheese. Luckily, there's some maps that are great that made me remember so much, and it's Turning Tides, where you defend the ship, Sinai Desert is one of them, and it's the name of the SAR, where Battlefield 1 improves its maps and has a new location to fight. Other maps like Urban Combat are also my favorite since it delivers everything that the Conquest and Operation map deliver. And Conquest is one of the Battlefield staples that I actually enjoyed more than the Operation because while it has the same problem as other Battlefield games, a squad can contribute by capturing one of the base points, distracting the enemies to relocate. What also made me enjoy Battlefield 1 is how this game has a sense of speed of movement, sprinting your way to the house to kill the sniper, or your squad feeling like you're in a real war in a simulation, or the bayonet you charge that you gotta kill it, which is so satisfying to surprise. So many people who got by in a charge, even me, got spooked in this game. And gunplay is alright, and going to vehicles is so damn immersive on how the game flows, and mantling places, it feels cinematic, and doesn't feel like a scripted sequence. The vehicles are a huge change, planes have a breakable feel when getting shot, and more of an arcade feel. Tanks are more about team play because so many transport to use guns. And horses are quite damn fun to slice people even if it feels clunky sometimes. And you got your standard motorbikes and armored cars. It's so damn surprising on a World War 1 game. Still have those battlefield staples of a vehicle when a lot of people doubt of a World War 1 limited technology. Guns are less which is a good thing. The problem I had in Battlefield 4 is about unlocks that you won't use a lot and instead use the goddamn <laughs> AEK but it's still enough to offer a lot of unlockables. While I respect people unlocking these stuff, for me it doesn't feel satisfying, but that's subjective. The other problem I had with multiplayer is just a progression where you skip XP and unlocking other crates are quite common for gaming in 2016. While I don't care about progression in this game but rather it's having fun, I can understand people's frustration in this game. Which is also why I understand people's frustrations on its war stories in Battlefield 1. What I struggle over the years is their single player. Battlefield lacks its competitor from Infinity War than having that illusion of the scripted sequence, pacing, and its scale. But instead of me having to compare Call of Duty's campaigns to Battlefield, I'll slice this up to 6 war stories, starting with the worst and the best. So we have 6 war story- Hey wait a minute! Aside from joking around about Metro Last Light's DLC in Battlefield, it feels the same, short length in each story, but at least does something that is alright or delivers it. And before I start making the tier of worst the best, we have to go to the elephant in the room. The war stories have plot holes and the stories are really predictable. That doesn't mean it's a bad story, as long as it's engaging. And it is engaging because every war story has its own themes, 
the dice can make a decent story or a good story, but with lack of time, resources, and a huge focus on multiplayer, it's understandable why it became like this. So let's go to the worst. The first one is Avanti Savoya. It's a war story that has two missions. It's a shame that they use some resources for this war story, and it's boring to play in the first mission over time. When you first boot up the cutscene, Avanti told the story to his daughter about his adventure in the Italy war and telling him what happened when his brother died. So in the past, he split the battalion with his brother because he's in the special unit that wears a sentry kit. At first it's a great introduction, a fun explosion, until you realize there's no tension. Tanks or heavy infantry are gone, it's just soldiers and flamethrowers. The only challenge is not to be that cocky, that's the only way you can die. And later the next scene after you destroy the fort gun and kill the AA personnel, you pick up the AA gun by yourself to be a one-man army. When it's team about war and it has scars, it rubs me the wrong way somehow. And after that, you don't have your armor and have your basic battlefield combat, which tends to be harder because of you versus our army of Aussies. And by the time it's done, your brother is dead. Honestly, this war story could have been better if they added a few more levels. Next war story. Friends in high places isn't that bad. Its first mission is a great introduction of a character on what if the person who is a hero is also a thief. So you're Blackburn, who you lied your name to visit half of the west, and the pacing isn't bad. In fact, it's decent because the first mission is a tutorial where you learn how to use the controls that you use, how to shoot and pilot a plane, just like doing it in Call of Duty 2, and using them on the battlefield, where you're still learning how to use it, until every plane is destroyed. And somehow, after you destroyed all of the planes, you spotted the fort by accident, where one German gets hit in the head. And second mission, the commander launcher attack, and all of your mechanics are used in the second mission, and each encounter makes a different pace, where you destroyed air bombers to a turrets, then you escort bombers until the fort is destroyed. It's decently well paced that I wish DICE understands that type of pacing because on how encounters you have to do it differently and prep so many voice lines. Third mission is just your standard battlefield gameplay, except you only have a pistol, and you don't have your plane, and you need to find Wilson. But the enemies aren't that threatening, which is odd, that you became a shuffle murderer, and bring Wilson back to safety by carrying him to visit No Man's Land, which the setting is really cool, seeing rats, barb warriors, British soldiers, and German soldiers died while they're still fighting each other in a small skirmish. Fourth mission is similar to the second mission by its pacing, except the last part is questionable, that you destroy two blimps alone, while Wilson is just punching the dude in the face, and they jump off the blimp just to go to the water. Blackburn told you the story and said this is his story, because he wouldn't lie to you. Would I? Friends in High Places is a decent pacing, and it's very mediocre at best, which isn't bad. Moving on to my favorite, the third war story is Storm of Steel. While it has one mission, I wish DICE could have used this to the rest of the war story. It's where you woke up that you're a hellfighter, where you can see brutal people fighting each other, and one of the random soldiers tries to defend, but gets overwhelmed, or airstrike from a bomber, and expecting you're not gonna survive in a World War 1. And it shows you different types of soldiers dying, and having that cool transition, that reminds me of Battlefield 2 Modern Combat, which while it's all scripted, it still makes people immerse because it shows you the soldier's experience in World War 1, with blimps, tanks, infantries. If this game could have been Battlefield 2 Modern Combat with the hot swapping, while the game shows the blood beaten up soldiers, most of the war story could have been received really well, but that's just me being in love with hot swapping, and fits with the Battlefield design, and doesn't wait for the action, but makes you glue on the screen. Now to my divided thoughts. Nothing is written is something I'm mixed with because one mission that is rather fast to defeat because it takes like a few seconds to shoot with the LMG without any strats except pointing and clicking to your PC that it doesn't have a great first impression and it's just you found the book of communication somehow. Until in the second mission is one of my highlights. There's formulas that you use stealth, combat, and finding resources of guns. Sometimes an army of enemies can take you down, unless you have gadgets, which you can do with no problem, 
then you need to have fake messages to ambush the train. And this is where I get problems with. The cutscenes has a lot of context on how the villain found you, only to get himself killed, and when going back to the village, it cuts them being in a camp. Its pacing and context is the issue why I mix with this, because the two missions are the personal highlights, second to the last, and its story lacks its meaning on how he survived, maybe add another level of him escaping or evacuating so at least it can explain some holes. And the last mission is another second mission except you try to use stealth and combat to kill an entire Ottoman Empire just so you can ambush the train with the rebels, using cannons. It's a decent boss spell but not enough to make the train engaging. And the person credited you for winning the war and gave you a revolver. This war story may be decent but it's not really thought out in the story and its impressions. And the runner, where this is the opposite from nothing is threatened. The story is emotional on a mentor, while its gameplay can sometimes be confusing in the last mission. It's a story where the young man wants to be like Frederick Bishop, and over time you teach the kid how to be the runner. While it's simple, fans are actually emotional and invested. The thing is, I just wish the story was much longer, and the characters flesh out. And what about the gameplay? It's just your standard Battlefield 1 campaign where you point and click with no strategy except throwing grenades or using gadgets. And the last mission is where you become a one-man army, but the Ottoman fort doesn't have a lot of enemies, unlike the second mission, but it's all worth it to hear that music and see an emotional ending, the character we play. If you like stories even though the story is simple, maybe you'll like this war story. And what else am I missing? Hold on, I'm checking my notes right now. Oh yeah, through Mud and Blood. This is my personal highlight on where the crew tries its best to survive and follow orders. It's an excellent story for its characters like Edwards, Townsend, Fisher, McManus, and the last guy just there for no reason without any dialogue. But this is where I have complaints and it's not the game's fault, by the way. It's the sandbox of tanks doesn't fit with the campaign linear sequence, but it does have its highlights like the third mission where you can get spark plugs, or the first mission on feeling like in a war is a decent attempt, but not enough to sell the spectacle. This is the war story that has a great impression. And most people played this second war story and Storm of Steel. It's a shame, because if Battlefield 1 has the pacing, resources, flexibility to its guns, and context, it would be one of the decent campaigns in Battlefield 1. It did improve Battlefield 4's AI, but not enough, and small chunks of war story are actually a great idea. I just wish the war stories are executed better. Battlefield 1, a game that I miss, but everyone remembers it. It's a game that is a memory to the Battlefield series, and it's one of the reasons why I still understand people prefer this game over to its former. This is one of the games that I actually have fond memories of remembering myself immersed to the war, to its explosions, textures, and the action is still there. War Stories on the other hand is something that I wish Battlefield 1 would improve, but it's a great effort actually to try to make a good story, which some stories, while simple, they're good. The thing that holds back is its gameplay and the lack of resources. I understand people prefer campaigns in Battlefield so over time DICE can learn their mistakes and improve to the next sequel, which sadly they didn't. I understand why but the sci-fi Battlefield was… well you can watch other videos for that, but the servers are still alive, custom browsers still exist which thank god they did. Battlefield 1 should be commended because of how DICE poured a lot of effort into its operations that you're a one man in a war. And I wish companies can learn what Battlefield 1 accomplished for its future since technology is already there but what holds us back is quantity over quality, which most companies these days do. They rather have money rather than reputation to their audience. And I wish people can call these companies out so we can bring back the quality of games again. While the Battlefield series is dying, at least people who play the old Battlefields will remember what they did whether it's Battlefield cartoons, a deep analysis for the Battlefield, and streamers making huge plays where there's depth and scale, at the same time changing a lot of people's lives for the better. Well this is odd. I remember I was planning to make Metro Last Light video, but that video is still in progress. I recently played Battlefield 1 again for curiosity on why I love that game, even though there's some issues with it. And thank you guys for watching my Halo Reach and Call of Duty.
because while it has low views, at least few people can watch and enjoy my videos. So thank you all, and see you in the next month.